world would have us believe we should never give in to weakness. Always fight against it. We should be strong. Paul himself talks much about this in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, where he says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Paul refers to his own weakness in different ways, both a physical infirmity and in his spiritual weaknesses. When he talks about how he finds himself doing what he knows he ought not to be doing, and not doing what he knows he ought to be doing. Does that sound familiar? Scholars have been trying to figure out what Paul's infirmity was for as long as people have been reading his letters. There are some that I came across in my studies these last few months that have a theory, and this is just a theory, I'm not claiming this. They say they think his, his infirmity was ugliness. They think he was unattractive. Not just unattractive, but ugly enough that he scared people when he walked in the room. I don't know, that's their theory. And when you look at the life that he lived after he came to Christ, it's very possible he may have ended up with some physical deformities because of the amount of beatings he took. Had to have an impact over a period of time, right? Regardless of, of what his infirmities were, he finally accepted that God had his own reasons for leaving Paul with it. After he prayed and prayed and prayed. And Paul was okay with that. God said no. And what did Paul do? He praised Jesus anyway and he went on with the work that he was called to. When I read these verses that talk about the clay jars, I can't help but remember one particular show I used to watch when I was a kid. These verses always remind me of a particular episode of the Brady Bunch. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I used to watch it every day, I admit it. But in one particular episode, some of the kids had been playing ball in the house while Mom and Dad Brady were not at home. Anyone who's never seen the show, there's six kids and the two parents. After they had specifically been forbidden to do so, but kids being poor kids, of course they went right ahead and threw the ball around anyway, and sure enough, before long they knocked over their mother's favorite vase and broke it. Being the supportive brothers and sisters that they all were, they all got together and tried to fix it so their parents would never know and the two who had broken it would not get in trouble. This is a common mistake that children make. <laughs> because as any parent will tell you, it takes all of about two minutes when you walk in the door to know your child has done something wrong. <laughs> they think they're hiding it. And we may not be able to put our finger on exactly what it is, but we know they're guilty of something. So of course the parents came home they know something's not right, but they're not sure what it is, and they go on about their business. And the kids are starting to think they might have gotten away with it. Right up until Mom asks them to bring the vase over, to put it on the dining room table, to put the fresh cut flowers in she had brought home. So now the whole family's sitting down to dinner, and all the kids are nervously keeping one eye on the vase. <laughs> they can't believe their luck. It's working. But the glue hadn't really had time to dry. And the glue starts to give way. Little by little, the first trickle of water can be seen running down the side of the vase. And they start to panic. And then another spot starts to leak, expect, except this time the water is spraying out in a fine stream right into the bowl of mashed potatoes. <laughs> Before you know it, the vase is leaking from more cracks than they can count, and the entire table is dripping from water. There's peas floating in a bowl and watered-down gravy flowing over the top of the gravy boat onto the white linen cloth. Mom and Dad are beginning to clue in. This describes exactly how we are the same as that broken vase. Weak, fragile, easily broken, but yet in these vessels, the glory of God, which is our treasure, is held. And when people look at us and we allow them to see the cracks, 
from our previous brokenness. They are able to see the light that is Christ shining through those cracks.